What's going on guys? Kevin the Tech Ninja here and today we're going to talk about the 13 inch MacBook Pro 2022. I guess that's the name of it. So I will say a lot of other content creators have made videos on this already, but they've got a lot wrong when it comes to this, or I guess they have the wrong mindset when talking about this laptop. So in this video, we're going to kind of cut the hyperbole and really talk about who this laptop is for and what you're getting out of this laptop. And if that sounds good to you, Let's talk about it. A big thanks to B&H Photo for sending this laptop over on Loner. If you didn't know, B&H Photo does way more than cameras. It does actually gear too. So if you need like a MacBook Pro, if you need anything Apple, or you wanna build a new computer, check out bnhphoto.com. So here are the five things you need to know. So the 2022 MacBook Pro comes with the M2 chip. Apple just announced it at WWDC. The M2 chip is more powerful than the M1 chip, but it's less powerful than the M1 Pro, the Max, and the M1 Ultra chips, which are available today. So you may be asking, what does that mean? So it means this base model of the MacBook Pro isn't an upgrade like those other chips. So if you need more horsepower, you're better off going with an older MacBook Pro, the 14 or the 16 inch, which you can get an upgraded M1 chip. Now with the M2 chip, you can get a couple of things right now on the base version. So you can actually configure it up to 24 gigabytes of RAM, which the M1 can't do. Even though the M2 doesn't have the most power just yet compared to the newer M1s, it's still fast and very efficient. Apple says the M2 chip is a significant upgrade over the stock M1 chip because you get 1.4 times faster video editing performance on the M2 MacBook Pro versus the M1 MacBook Pro. It also goes six times faster compared to an Intel chip 13 inch MacBook Pro. So let's assume the M2 Pro, M2 Ultra, and the M2 Max will be much faster than the M1s. But as of right now, the M2 is just base, so I will personally wait if those are your applications. But if you're coming from an Intel MacBook, you know, the M1 or the M2 is gonna be a huge upgrade and you will see so many changes and so many improvements across the board, no matter which chip you go with. So there are a few differences in the build. Number one, let's talk about display. The display on the 13 inch MacBook Pro is 13.3 inches. And that's actually a slightly smaller display than on the new MacBook Air at 13.6 inches since the MacBook Air has smaller bezels. Now, side by side, the new MacBook Air looks newer and more modern, it's sleeker with smaller bezel. So technically this new machine is a newer device, but at the same time, it has kind of this older build, which is interesting. Now, speaking of the touch bar, the touch bar is back, baby. Everybody wanted the touch bar. No, not really. A lot of people really didn't want the touch bar back. And it actually wasn't here last year. The 14 inch or the 16 inch MacBook Pro didn't have it, but now it's back. So if you're not familiar with the touch bar, what is it useful for? So mostly shortcuts, adjusting settings faster and things like that. So many people hated the touch bar and just wanted to set it on fire. Now I didn't hate it. I actually liked how it looked. I thought it looked futuristic, but I didn't use it a ton. I couldn't find enough reasons to use it outside of quickly adjusting volume and brightness. So seemingly Apple is moving away from the touch bar, but this laptop has a touch bar. So sort of a rewind when it comes to the build. It's kind of an older build, if you will. Now ports, last year's 14 inch MacBook Pro had MagSafe charging, HDMI, SD card slot, and support for up to four external displays with M1 Pro and M1 Max. And so the 2022 13 inch MacBook Pro only has support for one external display and it doesn't have HDMI or SD card slot and no MagSafe charging. So right there, that is a big downgrade in my opinion. You only have two Thunderbolt USB ports and a headphone jack. And that is a huge downgrade because having an SD card slot built in for a pro user it's kind of what you expect with this laptop you're going back to dongle city you're having tons of dongles again it is definitely a step in the wrong direction for a pro laptop so the facetime camera is still pretty bad they didn't upgrade it from the 2020 model the facetime camera on the 2022 13 inch macbook pro is only 720p even though the 2022 macbook air and the 14th inch macbook pro they have 1080p facetime cameras so yeah, I don't see why we have a downgrade in camera, but the good news is, there is good news guys, that you can use your iPhone as a Mac webcam. It's called Continuity Camera. This was also announced and demoed at WWDC 2022, and it is coming in the fall. The option to use your iPhones as your Mac webcam comes as an option as an anywhere camera that can be selected via Zoom, you know, Microsoft Teams, WebEx, anything like that, 
you do it right on the MacBook. Now the iPhone doesn't have you plugged into the Mac. It can be connected wirelessly, which is nice. It also has a cool feature called desk view. It uses a camera on your iPhone Pro to show a wide view of the desk. Of course, you'd have to properly mount it and angle it to view it the way you want it to show. And there's no official date on when this will be available, just we know sometime in the fall. So that's kind of a good thing. I mean, that's, that's actually a really cool thing, seeing how the camera isn't great on the actual MacBook. But at the same time, this is a new product. You should have the newest stuff in it, not the older stuff in it. So one of those things where it's like a Band-Aid to kind of remedy this, but at the same time, the MacBook Air, which is cheaper, and then we also have last year's MacBook Pro has a better camera, so. Okay, we gotta talk about battery life. The new 2022 MacBook Pro has all day battery life. You know, you're going up to 20 hours a day. And so it's actually a little bit more than the 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro, which does 17 hours. That is nice to see. Um, the M2 chip is more efficient, so you're gonna get better battery life. That is definitely a good thing. But of course, when you compare it to the cheaper Air, you're gonna have less battery life compared to the Air version because the MacBook Pro is gonna be a little bit beefier of a machine. So those are things you need to know about the new MacBook Pro. Now, my opinion of the MacBook Pro, I haven't had a chance to fully use it to get my full review, but I will tell you that when comparing it to the MacBook Air, I don't see a reason to go Pro over Air when it comes to this version of the device. And the reason I'm saying that is because the MacBook Air does everything that the MacBook Pro does. The MacBook Pro does come with an extra fan that can help the chip stay cool, but in my experience, I can't make the fans kick on by taxing the system by using Final Cut and things like that. But if you are just a standard user, someone who's not doing hardcore video editing and content creation or programming and rendering high-end video, then the MacBook Air is a excellent device. And the MacBook Air can also edit video too. When it comes to rendering, you're not gonna notice any type of speed difference because they're both running the same processor and obviously it just depends on the config you have. Anyways guys, those are my ideas. I wanna know what yours are. Sound off down below. Kevin the Tech Ninja, have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.